Since the day the Earth was born, it has gone through a lot of changes. During a time, it was like a hell. Some time later, it turned into a snowball. During an era, it rained for 2 million years, which we made a video on. And there was a time where all the land was stuck together and it created the supercontinent called Pangaea. Except this giant landmass, there was a giant ocean as well. An ocean called Pantalassa. There were a lot of animals living on Pangaea. And when we say ancient animals, everybody imagines dinosaurs or Mosasaurus, or Titanoboa. But these animals are extremely new, and Pangaea is much older than these animals, about 300 million years old. We still need 60 to 70 million years until the first dinosaurs show up. We're not here to talk about dinosaurs, we want to see what happened before then. The period before the dinosaurs is called the Permian. The Permian era began around 300 million years ago, and it pretty much began after a huge ice age, where most of the Earth's surface was covered in ice for millions of years. And when the ice is starting to melt, the Permian era begins, and the ice melting around the globe creates opportunities for new animals to show up. In the beginning of the Permian era, the average temperature was about 4 degrees Celsius, and that's extremely cold. But you have to know that the world just came out of an ice age, and it's heating up extremely slowly. In this era where the weather is getting hotter, there is a lack of oxygen as well. The more ice melts, the warmer the weather gets, and the more plants grow. And slowly, the density of oxygen is starting to rise. Time passing makes the Earth more habitable for different animals around the globe. The Earth is getting more habitable, but there is still a lot of active volcanoes around the world. A lot of inactive volcanoes you see right now were probably active around that era. You could tell which mountain was active or not by looking at its age. If it's over 300 million years old, it was most likely active during the Permian, but if it's younger, it's not. The ash of the volcanoes went around the world and sat on different plants. And that's when these plants started to change, and they started to actually evolve towards getting better. You could say it was the ash that made them be stronger and evolved to be better. Because before then, the variety of plants were extremely low. Everybody knows tardigrades or water bears. Around this era, these guys have been alive and living for hundreds of millions of years. And since it lived in all types of temperatures on Earth, it is known as the most durable and unkillable animal on Earth. But let's continue. The same era we're speaking of, the first cockroaches start to show up. But they didn't look like the cockroaches we have today. They were a little bit bigger, at least 10 centimeters in length. One of the most interesting animals that lived during the Permian is this animal, the Dimetrodon. At first you think it's a dinosaur, but it's actually not, it's a mammal. It had a length of 5 meters, weighed as much as 230 kilos, and its spine had a giant sail made of bones. Scientists have realized that this sail that's located on this animal's back is actually a form of radiator, and it adjusts the temperature of the animal. The way the sail worked, it kept the heat inside the sail, and during the day, the heat wouldn't reach the animal's body, but when it got cold, the heat would transfer inside the body. We thought radiators were something new, but apparently they're 300 million years old. This mammal was considered a predator, and it was one of the biggest predators during the Permian era. The Permian era lasted from 300 million years ago, all the way to 250 million years ago. Around 270 million years ago, an interesting reptile shows up on Earth, an animal called Lycanopes. This was a carnivorous reptile 
and you could compare it to an extremely early form of dinosaur, but it was only one meter in length, so it was not big whatsoever. Just like we said, the temps are rising by the year, and when we get to 270 million years ago, when there's still 20 million years left of the Permian, the weather has gotten very hot. The average temperature of the planet is 25 degrees Celsius. You might say 25 degrees is perfect, how good was it back then? But you have to know that this is the average temperature. Right now, the average temperature of the planet is only 15 degrees. So an average of 25 degrees is very hot. And that is why there is no North or South Pole. Everywhere is hot. The best life right about now is in the water, and the good conditions is raising their population by the day. One of the first sharks is showing up around this era, and it's good to know that sharks are one of the oldest animals on earth, and they haven't changed much from the beginning. And that means you could compare a Permian type shark to today's shark, and you won't see that much of a difference. When we're nearing the end of the Permian, around 260 million years ago, Another interesting reptile showed up, and it had an insane population back then, the Listosaurus. When you look at this, you think it's a hybrid of different animals, but it wasn't that. This was a very tiny one meter reptile, and it was also a herbivore. And the reason it had a high population was because during this era, the world was pretty much green and there was plenty of food to go around for this little guy. The ancestors of rats live here, the Cynodon. This type of rat had a length of one meter, and that's insane. Imagine a rat but one meter in length attacking you. This animal would eat anything, animals smaller than itself, insects, and even plants. When we're at the last 10 million years of the Permian, between 260 to 250 million years ago, the volcanoes are extremely active throughout the planet and it's producing so much CO2 and ash that it's making everybody suffocate around them. And this activity causes the oxygen levels to lower. Scientists believe that during the end of the Permian era, the oxygen levels were less than 10%. Right now, 25% of the atmosphere is oxygen. If you want to experience the weather like then, you have to start mountain climbing, go up on Everest, and on top, the oxygen level is about 7%. So you experience the same amount of oxygen during the end of the Permian era. Billions of years has passed since the Earth was born. The Permian era lasted about 48 million years, but everything must come to an end, and the Permian era did so. The volcanoes created so much CO2 and killed so much oxygen that 90% of living animals die, and most of the animals that actually survived were living inside the ocean. This mass extinction that happened in this era is called the Great Dying and it is known as the biggest mass extinction in history. And nothing like this has ever happened, where more than 90% of living animals died. Either way, just like we said, volcanoes suffocated the planet and eradicated most of its animals. The Permian era ends and the Triassic period begins. In the beginning of the Triassic era, the earth is pretty much destroyed because most of the animals went extinct but there's still some animals left on land a little bit more in the oceans and they're still living life this dark era lasts 5 million years and then we get to 245 million years ago this is when the activity of volcanoes have lowered and the oxygen levels are rising once again and this causes different animals and plants to be born again. This is the same era where the first dinosaurs are born, they evolve, and they will live 180 million years into the future. That's an insane number, 180 million years they lived on Earth. Us humans that think we own the world have been here for less than 3 million years. When the Earth sees us, it probably laughs because it has seen so many different animals come and go and it looks at the human and thinks they own the world. 